morning, everyone. Today I'm going to talk about my research topic, soil moisture heterogeneity, as Ning has. Uh, I have a similar topic with Ning, and it's kind of different a little bit. Firstly, let's, what is uh, soil moisture, as we can see here? So moisture is a key part in the hydrological cycle. I'm most focusing on this uh, area, like the pre from precipitation processes to the infiltration and to the runoff generation processes. Uh, soil moisture is the water stored in the soil, absolutely. But this more, as we can see, this is uh, suppose like this is a soil column you can see, and there's ground water level changing with the time, and the Soils under the groundwater level is called the saturated zone, and the areas above is the unsaturated zone. The soil moisture we mentioned here is mostly concerned the store is the water stored in the unsaturated zone, which varies a lot due to the precipitation and vegetation types and soil types and other variables we can see. So, by studying this soil moisture, it is really difficult to get the data because uh, previous study research has done, have done work most concentrated in three categories. Firstly, we are talking about the con solely on the soil moisture. It's the spatial and temporal distribution of soil moisture has been identified at various scales in the previous study, from the small scales such as the point ones, or like even in your backyard, or from the larger scales as the continental scales or global scales. The spatial and temporal distributions are identified in some of the areas, but there are still lots of places are not being identified, such as the high elevation places, because it is, it is really hard to get to there and hard to get the data over there. And secondly, it's used for the global and regional climate predictions. The interactions between climate and soil moisture has been identified in previous studies, and it's some studies show that the, by in, incorporating the soil moisture in the climate modeling, it can be, be pro, improve their, their model pro, performance by 10% or 15%. And the third one is assimilating soil moisture into models for disasters such as drought, that has mentioned, and the flood. Especially for flood, it, the flood prediction is really hard. And by with soil moisture, especially the antecedent for soil moisture could increase the pre prediction accuracy of that one. So the knowledge gap here mainly focused on the specially and temporary ones. Specially is that they mentioned before it's hard to get the data at in complex area and the temporary is that the soil moisture measurement is only begins like in several decades, several tens of years, so there's lack of long term data. My specific contributions might be uh, the research to answering the two research questions. The first one is based on the current soil moisture observation methods, how to improve the accuracy of soil moisture estimation. Especially, like there are now three ways to get the soil moisture data. One is in the observations, the other is remote sensing, another is modeling. But for especially for the ground measurements, it's mainly conducted as a point scale. It's hard to get the points with there's no observations there. But as long as remote sensing can cover some of the areas with no observations, the observations, but the accuracy is still hard to mention. And based on all of these measurements, we can like combine them and develop uh, error structures of these various measurements and trying to trying to get some more accurate data, which we used for multiple applications. And the second aim is to, after we get this more ac accurate soil moisture, how, how do we, what's the, what else, does it, how does it matter, how does it work? Like, it could be, my focus is most on the runoff prediction with the soil moisture, because the hardest one part is the watershed with high elevations, it try to predict the soil moisture over there, and the runoff generation process over there is the it's really hard to predict. So the second and third, uh, third goals are to compare and develop methods which will reduce the errors in soil moisture estimation and completely evaluate the relationship between soil moisture and runoff. Hopefully, there will be good ma good methods or good results to generate for better predicting the runoff. So, what what does it matters for? 
run out and solve more trick. Firstly, the water resource management would be improved. Like, if we have more accurate prediction of run out, the, the dams will be easy to predict if there are a flood coming and we have more control of the water to release or to store more water in it. And the other one is the irrigation project, whether if the soil moisture is above the need of the crops, then we don't need to irrigate them too often. And when it drops to the lower, lower of the irrigation the crops needs, we may, might need to find some ways by irrigation them. And the, the last one is the disaster risk assessment, which we'll be doing for the, like predicting drought and flood, which to several months or several days before that to avoid that disasters cause much more severe deaths. That's all, thank you. Very nice. So, um